and thanks for joining us on Nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority, the NTA. I am Ronke Kolawoli. Improved budgetary allocation for the armed forces and its training institutions, as well as the synergy between the military, legislature, and civil society organizations have been advocated in tackling security challenges in the country. This is the submission of former head of state, General Abdusalam Abubakar, during a lecture to commemorate 25th anniversary of the National Defense College, Abuja. Defense correspondent Isaac Nkuma reports. General Abdul Salami Abubakar was the third commandant of the National Defense College after its establishment in 1992. Sharing his thoughts on capacity building for defense management, the role of National Defense College, he said addressing the prevailing security situation in the country needs the understanding and support of all arms of government. I believe if uh, our politicians, our NGOs, and stakeholders in this country attend short courses in this uh, institute. They will have a better graph of security and understanding of nation building. In the last 25 years, the National Defense College has served as a think tank for the military, sister security agencies, and some government parastatus on national security and development policy formulation. It should also be a time to reflect on the achievement of this great institution in the past two and a half decades and project into the future of how the college could make more impact. The college is striving to improve its curriculum and facilities to deliver the appropriate strategic leadership training that will meet emerging security challenges in Nigeria in the next, shall I say, 25 years or 50 years. So far, the NDC has trained over 2,000 senior military officers and their contemporaries in the civil service. In Abuja, Isaac Nkuma, NTA News. In the meantime, police has warned communities, organizations and individuals to desist from acquiring illegal weapons under the guise of protecting themselves from attacks, saying firearms are still prohibited in the country. This was during a parade of 28 suspects arrested in seven states for various offenses. Edino Justice has that report. The offenses range from kidnapping, illegal possession of firearms, to armed robbery and cattle rustling. The first spokesperson said the police, in its effort to get rid of criminals, sent out special tactical squad who arrested the suspects from Niger, Kano, Kaduna, Kogi, and Plateau states. Other states are Sokoto and the Federal Capital Territory. Items recovered include 10 AK-47 rifles, assorted locally fabricated rifles, 50 cows, and many rounds of life ammunition. CSB Jima urged the public to continue to give police information. Thank members of the public uh, in this state and equally across the federation for making useful information available to the Nigerian police. And we have put a lot of crime prevention and control strategy in place to ensure that everybody is safe. So there's nobody that have any excuse under the law to go and acquire prohibited firearms. One of the suspects who admitted his specialty in kidnapping teenagers in Abuja said he was lured into it by a friend while another man, about 60 years old, said he got involved in trading weapons to defend his community. The first spokesperson who urged the public to always support law enforcement agencies said all the suspects will be charged to court. Aiding or justice, NTA News. Meanwhile, 11 suspects have been paraded in Abuja for alleged vandalism of armored cables belonging to the Abuja Electricity Distribution Company, AEDC. The suspects were paraded before journalists by the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, FCT Command, as reported by Olainka Ojo. Activities of vandals in various sectors of the economy has been a major setback in government's effort towards boosting the economy. This cuts across gas pipeline and electrical vandalism resulting to shortage of electricity supply. 
The hand of the law caught up with some vandals based on constant surveillance by men of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps in line with its mandate of protecting public assets. The suspects were alleged to have stolen armored cables of the AEDC at the Central Business District area in Abuja on Tuesday. Based on further investigation, they led us to the middlemen who buy from them, we arrested those ones, and we also were able to get to where they sell these things. One of the suspects, Abubakar Sharif, made a confessional statement. It is because I want to have something to feed myself. That is why I engage in the act. Director, Risk and Compliance, Abuja Electricity Distribution Company, Collins Chaboka, puts the cost of the vandalized item at 3.5 million naira. Any person who comes forward with tangible information, uh, where we even make arrests like this one, ADC will reward them. NSCDC says the suspect will be charged to court on completion of the investigations. In Abuja, Olain Kaujo, NTA News. The House of Representatives says it will accelerate the passage of the Petroleum Industry Bills. Chairman House Committee on Media and Public Affairs, Abdrazak Namdas, said this while briefing National Assembly correspondents shortly after the legislators passed three petroleum industry bills for second reading. The Speaker has actually announced an, a composition of an ad hoc committee that will work on the public hearing of this very all-important bill. This House has adjourned to 4th of July. We have to go on two weeks break, uh, which will cover up to salary break, and then return on the 4th of July to continue with the business of legislation. Similarly, the sponsor of the Economic Amnesty Bill, Linus Okorie, has explained that the bill, which has passed first reading in the House of Representatives, seeks to allow Nigerians who have acquired money illegally to voluntarily declare it, pay tax, and be granted full amnesty. To declare them, pay tax and some surcharge, and compulsorily invest the balance of the funds in any sector of his or her choosing of the Nigerian economy, and be granted full and unconditional inquiry from, uh, amnesty from inquiry and prosecution. In also education matters, the leadership crisis at the Federal University, Dusima, in Casino State, may have taken a turn for the worse, as the chairman of the governing board of the university, Dr. Marilia Zian, has threatened to resign over alleged pressure on her to overturn the suspension of the vice chancellor of the university, Professor Haruna Abdukaita. National Assembly correspondent Dennis Adegunloye reports that this issue was brought before the House Committee on Tertiary Institutions. The board suspended the vice chancellor for six months to allow for investigations of several petitions against him alleging corruption and abuse of office. While the Minister of Education had insisted on a full investigation of the allegations, pressure from some traditional institutions and some political elite demand for the immediate reinstatement of the vice chancellor. The chairman of the board, however, insists on resigning than reinstating the suspended vice chancellor prior to a full investigation. He continued to make announcements on TV, radio, and the casino, and personally insulting and attacking me. I am a very modest person. I have everything that has ever been written about me on the internet. But I have told all my supporters, everybody who has something to do with me, not to write anything about this issue on the internet or to respond to any provocation. I wrote letters to uh, the Honorable Minister, the first letter, stating that, look, I believe that procedures were not followed in handling the issue. I wasn't given a copy of the petition to respond, but I was asked to step aside, meaning, meaning that I was suspended. Chairman of the committee, Aminu Suleiman, and members were concerned about actions by both parties. You are procedurally wrong. He too is procedurally wrong. At the committee, he can choose to disagree, whether to continue because he has not been served, or to wait and collect and answer it if he is competent that he is not guilty. 
The committee will look further into the saga prior to any further legislative action to be taken. In another development, the House Ad Hoc Committee on Artifacts has heard from key parties on the issue of retrieving the nation's artifacts, some centuries old from museums and other places of custody in foreign countries. We're keeping this thing since over 200 years. The committee will report back at plenary on the best way forward. From the National Assembly, Dennis at Degenloye, NTA News. Still staying with the legislature, the House of Representatives at Hawk Committee on the Central Bank of Nigeria's intervention funds has commenced investigation on 1.3 trillion naira, specifically meant for electricity distribution companies. It is with a view to investigate the level of, of compliance with the lending terms. National Assembly correspondent Abdullahi Aminu has that report. The ad hoc committee was mandated to investigate the disbursement of all intervention funds by the Central Bank of Nigeria from 2007 to date based on complaints by some stakeholders. The concern is on the disbursement processes, selection of beneficiaries and what they have used it for. It was another fund that was established four years prior to the discourse coming. So that's what we thought uh, you were asking us for information on that, which is why we responded that no, we did not receive monies under that form. Committee's chairman, Basse Ewa, frowns at the inability by the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria or his deputies to appear before the committee for explanation on the complaints and some documents. The documents show that 449 billion naira was remitted, while 802 billion naira is still outstanding out of the total amount. We must ensure that the funds are properly utilized. That is key. The impact must be felt by Nigerians. The committee fixed to 1st July for continuation of the investigative hearing with all stakeholders involved, including the attendance of the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria and his management. From the National Assembly, Abdullahi Aminu, NTA News. Away from the National Assembly now. NTS Good Morning Nigeria program this Friday examined the mining sector. Victor Azu reports that panelists agreed that the roadmap for the development of the sector, if effectively implemented, has the necessary ingredients to make mining a mainstay of the country's economy. In a bid to diversify the economy, the federal government is looking at the mining sector as one area to open up. The just concluded National Mining Summit and unveiling of the roadmap for the growth and development of the Nigerian mining industry are some of the steps taken so far in this regard. Guests on Good Morning Nigeria this Friday also deliberated on how to develop the mining sector and encourage investments. The Minister of State for Steel and Solid Minerals Development, Abubakar Bawabwari, admitted that infrastructure has been the major stumbling block in developing the sector, but the political will of the present administration has led to major inroads in the sector. In improved in monitoring, and uh, because of the improved surveillance and monitoring, the revenue in mining has increased from uh, 2007, which was barely 700 million, to 3 billion in 2016. Local investors in the sector, Patrick Odiegu and Demolag Badigeshin, hailed the introduction of the mining roadmap as a way to go, but notes that there is still more that the nation can do to develop the sector. It's one thing to have a law, and we have a very, very good mining law in place. It's one thing to have the agencies in place, but it's another thing to actually have them running smoothly. And those are the issues that the roadmap is actually addressing. How careless can a nation be? You have a product that can actually ignite a strong economic activity in our rural areas. It's found in more than seven states of this nation. And people have the, 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 the audacity to give waiver for people to import the same product into this country. For crying out loud, why? Nigeria should be forced. For Professor of Geology and Chair of the Mining Implementation Strategy Team, things are already looking up in the mining sector and investors will have reasons to smile in due course. The strategy to really implement the roadmap is now in place. It's, it's, a, it's a good beginning and um, I think if it is sustained, and I think there is a will to sustain this, then Nigeria will soon be one of the main mining destinations. They are
all agree that the roadmap is a step in the right direction and one which has restored hope in the sector. In Abuja, Victor Azu, NTA News. Just to tell you that you can watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. More training for the military to tackle emerging security challenges as Jennifer in Lagos take us through this and other reports trending at the Center of Excellence. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, Ronke. Good evening and a warm welcome to Lagos. Developing a well-planned roadmap for digital switchover in Nigeria will help fast-track infrastructural development in the country. The Director General of the National Broadcasting Commission, Ishak Modibo Kawu, stated this at a media briefing on the switch over to digital television in, Ni in Lagos. Kenny Beluge has details. Nigeria is expected to conclude its migration from analog to digital broadcasting by June 17, 2017, a process popularly referred to as digital switchover, DSO. Nigeria had either to miss out on two previous deadlines in 2012 and 2015. However, facts on ground indicate that this date may not be realistic. For instance, experts say there are still issues around set-up buses manufacturing lack of awareness and poor funding. The Director General National Broadcasting Commission told newsmen that the country has made giant strides in digital shift in order to achieve a seamless transition from analog to digital terrestrial television in Nigeria. Hopefully, we are going to achieve the 95% coverage of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which is what the ITU expects us to do. The Director General also spoke on the country's readiness to create the much-needed awareness on the process. When we go to a particular part of the country, we're going to do a lot of saturation publicity in those places so that people in those communities can be more aware of what we're going to do. And then moving forward, we'll put a lot more resources into nationwide publicity. Eventually, Go TV, Star Times will have to migrate to the transmission network of any of the signal distributors of their choice. The National Broadcasting Commission also advised Nigerians not to be skeptical about the reality of the transition as the pilot in Jos and subsequent rollout in Abuja proved that the process is on course. In Lagos, Ken Igbeluge, NTA News. A leadership development seminar aimed at equipping military personnel with the right skills, values, and orientation to enable them to carry out their roles effectively has ended in Lagos. Abolore Ogbara reports that it is the first phase of the leadership seminar by the Nigerian Army. The theme, strategic thinking and organizational effectiveness, is in line with the directive by the Chief of Staff on improving service delivery in Nigerian Army. Chief of Accounts and Budget Army, Brigadier General Jahadi Jako, represented by Brigadier John Ozigi, emphasized that the intellectual exercise will be of maximum benefit to the participants who are always in the vanguard of leading, commanding, and managing human and financial resources of the service. He pointed out that the seminar will develop a deeper understanding of the links between culture, change management, and innovation to the personnel. I also implore you to remain good and of the Nigerian Army at all times, whenever, wherever you find yourselves. The seminar afforded the military personnel the opportunity to interact extensively on the way forward while underscoring the importance of leadership in curbing security challenges in the country. You must remain steadfast and contribute to your own quota to the overall efforts being made to foretell and to contend with prevailing security situation in our country. For you to have a professional army, you must have, uh, the capacity must be enhanced. So training is a key aspect of any uh, professional development. At the end of the four-day intellectual exercise, it is expected that the military personnel will apply creative innovations capable of portraying positive changes in the discharge of their duties. In Lagos, Abolore Obara, NT News.
Now, the Lagos State government has presented checks totaling 924.7 million naira to 1,438 beneficiaries of the Employment Trust Fund scheme. Scheme. The initiative by Governor Akin Wumi Ambodi provides entrepreneurs, artisans, and traders with capital to boost their businesses, thereby creating employment and increasing wealth among the citizenry. Losa Usula reports that over 4,000 businesses have benefited from the scheme. The governor, who was represented by the Commissioner for Wealth Creation and Employment, Dr. Babatunde Durusimi Eti, expressed the light that the government was on course to meet the objectives of the initiative. I am glad to know from the report of the board that most of the beneficiaries, including those whose applications have been approved on a monthly basis, have started repaying their loans, expanding their interest, the business interest and also creating jobs. The chairman board of employment trust fund, Ifweku Omoigui Okaru, revealed a partnership between the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund and the United Nations Development Program to improve technical and vocational training in the states. Those that are applying should be real. Don't come to us with fake businesses. If we find you, we'll report you to the police. Governor Ambode had in January presented checks totaling about 1 billion to 705 beneficiaries who were selected after scaling through a transparent screening process in Lagos, Nusa, Osula, NTA News. You're still watching Nationwide News. Back to Ronke in Abuja for more. Ronke, over to you. Good, Jennifer. The National Assembly has emphasized the need for Nigeria to harness its tourism potentialities for the sector to attract foreign investors. This came up at a one-day public hearing on a bill for an act to provide for the establishment of the National Institute for Hospitality and Tourism by the Senate Committee on Culture and Tourism. National Assembly correspondent Ifai Izumba reports. The Institute for Hospitality and Tourism is an existing institution under the Ministry of Information. It was established in 1988. The bill therefore seeks to give it the legal backing for its operations and in providing improved qualitative services and specialized training as well as diploma and postgraduate courses in hospitality management. The Senate President Bukola Saraki in a message said tourism is one sector the nation has not fully explored. Today's public hearing is a testament to the fact that we have a strong desire in ensuring that this sector is well structured, taking into consideration the amount of landmarks and historical sites we have in the country. Building on tourism, aim at putting in place a legal and institutional framework that shall train manpower in the hospitality and tourism practices. The Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, in a message, is of the opinion that the bill be revisited so that the business of tourism will be professionalized. The bill, in my opinion, is giving my hotel the position of both trainer and regulator of everything related to tourism, thereby disregarding the legality of other parameters under my ministry. We, we need to be mindful what needs to be updated as per what already exists before we create new laws for agencies that do not have uh, existing frameworks. We decided to set up another cultural institute that can prepare people to produce Nigerians in a Nigerian culture fully integrated. The bill when passed into law, members say it will make practitioners more equipped to create new initiatives that can drive tourism and make it a huge foreign exchange earner in Nigeria. From the National Assembly, Ifani, Izumba, NT News. Economic viability and efficient service delivery will not be compromised by the federal government in redefining the transportation sector in Nigeria. This was made known at a stakeholders forum on innovations and solutions on road transport operations in Abuja. Oyinaya Kaluoka reports. Available records show that the road transport subsector accounts for more than 90% in terms of movement of persons and goods in the country. 
that the deplorable condition of the roads crisscrossing the country is an invitation for the private sector to get involved. The forum therefore provides a platform for the private sector to develop a viable innovations to improve road transportation in the country. The present administration under President Muhammad Buhari is in recognition of the transportation sector as an untapped gold mine and in the quest to diversify the economy is making concerted effort towards improving the sector. The forum has a theme transforming the road transport and mass transit operations. Oyinaya Kalu Oka, NTA News. We now go straight to the mosque where Muslim faithful have been enjoined to take advantage of the last 10 days of Ramadan to pray for the development of the country. The chief imam of FCDA Jumat Mosque, Abdullahi Ahmed, gave the admonition in his sermon. Musa Abubakar reports that the cleric advises Muslims to strive towards addressing societal challenges and seek Allah's guidance through prayers. Be kind to himself and to the country by praying or devoting himself to God, submitting himself to God so that Allah, God will answer him and he should pray and include the country in his prayer and even put the country first before him, his own self. <laughs> Day 21 of the Ramadan fast, Muslim faith works trace the essence of the exercise as we join Kemi in Ibadan Network Center for details. Hello, Kemi. Thank you, Ronke, and a warm welcome to Ibadan. Candidates of at least three political parties have emerged preparatory to the Ocean West Senatorial by-election slated for July 8 to fill the vacant seat of late Senator Isiaka. Adeleke. The candidates are Ademola Adeleke, the younger brother of a late senator who emerged from the PDP primary, Senator Mudashir Hussein of APC and Badi Faladi of SDP. Adeni Taiwo has details. With the last minute stepping down of two other contestants, Senator Olasukomi Akilabi and Olaiwala Falabi, the coast became clear for Ademola. sole aspirant of the party for the vacant seat. And because you cannot do anything without the approval of God. He is the candidate of the party. Very transparent process. Free, fear. Senator Mudashir, who was earlier disqualified from participating in the primary by APC screening and later appeal panel, was reinstated by the National Working Committee of the party. The two candidates, Ambade Falade of the Social Democratic Party, will slug it out in the July 8 poll to replace late Senator Isaka Adeleke. Inu Shubo, Adini Itawo, NT News. Muslims have been advised to always remember the needy to give them a sense of belonging. Governor Abiola Ajumobi said these while hosting media professionals for Ramadan Iftar at the government house, Ibadan. Adebola Ogulano has details. The Ramadan Iftar, organized by the Oyo State's government, was meant to bring Muslims together in one table as ordained by Allah. The Iftar, which had been the tradition of Governor Biola Jumobi since he became governor of Oyo State six years ago, attracted Islamic leaders, high chiefs, head of media organizations, breaking the fast with his guests. Governor Biola Ajimobi said one of the objectives of Ramadan fast is caring and sharing, especially to the less privileged, for them to have a sense of belonging. The governor took advantage of the gathering to highlight some of his achievements in office six years ago. And the first thing we said was that all major entries into major cities of this state must be modernized, must be dualized with all the architecture that is necessary. 
Some of the guests expressed their appreciation to the governor for the gesture. To sort of uh, draw the attention to that social responsibility of uh, improving the understanding of everyone and the fact that we are all one. To share humanity, to share belief in the divinity of the almighty Allah is commendable. Uh, at least uh, you can see the commoners, you can see uh, those who are media executives. They advised Muslims to double the assistance they have been rendering to the needy since the commencement of this year's Ramadan for abundance blessings in Ibadan. Adebola Ogunlano, NTA News. Ogun State Police Command has assured commuters plying the Shagamu or Rebinin Highway of adequate security while embarking on their journey. Public Relations Officer of the Command, Abimbola Oyeyemi, gave the assurance while displaying corpses of two suspected armed robbers killed while operating at Area J4 axis of the highway. Correspondent Yemi Dalimo has the details. The luxury bus which took off from Jibowu in Lagos to Port Harcourt was attacked by a seven-man armed robbery gang at Area G4 axis of the Bini Ore Expressway. The robbers hijacked the 34 passenger vehicle, drove them into the bush, robbed them of their money and valuables, and thereafter returned them to the main road and continued robbing other vehicles. Unknowingly to the robbers, the driver of the bus, Olale Kwaridiji, had escaped and went to report to the police. We are going back with the enforcement of uh, police people. Then they now enter the jungle. To be Luckily for us, they want the battle. Police in, in within some of part of this country, they are really working. They respond to our cry immediately. The public relations officer of the state police command, Abim Bolao Yemi, said the robbers engaged the police team in gun deal, which resulted into the death of the two robbers while others escaped with injuries. I want to assure the, the resident of Ogun State, as well as the commuter flying Ogun State uh, route, Ogun State Police Command, we are not leaving any stone on top to make sure that the life and property of the resident of the state are well secured. Some of the recovered items from the robbers include three pump action rifles, two locally made pistols, expended cartridges, mobile phones and laptops, as well as undisclosed amount of money and three operational vehicles of the gang. Yemi Dalemo, NT News. And that's it from Ibadan. It's back to Ronke in Abuja for the continuation of Nationwide. Thank you, Kemi. As part of efforts to align its operations for effective and efficient service delivery in line with the executive order signed by Acting President Yemi Oshimbaju, the Federal Road Safety Corps has organized a strategic session for Zona Commanding Officers in Abuja. Ali Yutukuru has the details. The executive order E001, which was signed barely a month, is on promoting transparency and improving business environment in the country. Against this backdrop, the Federal Road Safety Corps held a strategic session in order to identify areas of operations requiring alignment to the executive order so as to achieve the Corps' strategic mandate. Corps Marshal Boboye Oyeyemi says all hands must be on deck to pursue the goal of realizing the tenets of the executive order as the role of the Corps remains unquantifiable. There's no area in which stable development is more important than this executive order in terms of human welfare, that is transportation. Therefore, FRSC goal is to ensure free and safe movement across the country. This executive order uh, 001 is effective from the end of this month because that is when the 21 days expired. To further tackle the nation's traffic situation and reduce accident rate, more unit commands and outposts are being established as the code declared war on life-threatening offenses. In Abuja, Ali Utukur, NTA News. You're watching Nationwide on NTA Network Service. We'd like to take a breather. We'll be back in a short while. Stay with us. From what we have seen, we have the capacity which we can rapidly develop or feed in ourselves. 
If we don't import rice, we stop importing corn and other grains. Nigeria will have plenty of money to invest into developing industries, especially manufacturing, textiles and so on, and develop iron and steel, and complement the infrastructure development. So really, the opportunities are virtually limitless, and we are very, very aware of this, and we are prepared to explore it to the fullest. Fabulous Fab Funke Akindele Bello, a.k.a. Jennifer, adorning the cover. She opens a secret not known even to her family. Find out the secret. NTA turns 40 this year. The challenges, the emerging trends in broadcasting, and the way forward. Weekend Dealer 2. Meet the team behind the biggest deal on NTA. Is food still the way to a man's heart? If not, what else? This edition is hot and juicy. Meet your star faces on screen. Entertainment, fashion, young minds, social media, and great personalities. This is idiosyncratic and heterodox. Yeah. Yes, Professor John Bowl is on the radar. Find out what makes this program the rave of the moment on NTA Network and for the prof over and out. TV Guide. Ask your vendors or book your copy at every NTA station nationwide. TV Guide. Steal your indispensable companion. The Future Assured Project of the Wife of the President, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, is carrying out free medical screening and distribution of food items at various IDP camps while ensuring the economic empowerment of women through training and skill acquisition. In recognition of her efforts, wives of governors have lent their voices and support. In Kogi State, we feel the impact of Future Assured, especially in women and children. The Future Assured program of Mrs. Aisha Muhammad Bahari, the wife of the president, has been very assuring and still reassuring in Sokoto State. It has impacted positively in the areas of humanity, especially women and children. Support the Future Assured initiative. Email programs at futureassured.org.ng Future Assured, promoting and protecting the lives of Nigerian women and children. Imagine being without your phone for two weeks. Imagine being without your car for two weeks. Imagine being without electricity for two weeks. Yeah, two weeks is definitely a big deal. Introducing Star Times 2 for 2 promo. Subscribe for two months on any bouquet and get two weeks free of exciting contests like the International Champions Cup, FIFA Confederations Cup, and all FIFA competitions. Enthralling Nollywood flicks, intriguing Bollywood scenes, stimulating telenovelas, SpongeBob, Dora the Explorer, and fantastic kiddies programs, all for free. Recharge now and get two weeks free. Keep the children and the entire family entertained during this summer holiday. Star Times. Enjoy digital life. Admission forms for the 2017 stroke 2018 academic session of NTA Television College JAWS into its diploma programs are now on sale. The diploma programs are in film and TV production, broadcast journalism, and TV engineering technology. Applicants are required to have at least five credits, including English language and mathematics, at SSE, NECO, or GCO levels in not more than one sitting. Application forms can be obtained from the TV College Refi JAWS or at any NTA Zona centers nationwide on payment of a no refundable fee of 7,500 naira in bank draft in favor of NTA Television College. Completed application forms should be returned to the Office of the Academic Secretary, NTA Television College, or the Center of Purchase on or before 28th of July 2017. For further inquiries, please call 0806 980 9807 or 703 660 7155. NTA Television College, training you to be the best you can be. For over 
over 25 years, I have been privileged to anchor various programs on television. But the news program that I find most exciting and challenging is The Weekend File. This is largely because of its philosophy of engaging all classes of people, the artisans, politicians, technocrats, captains of industry, and professional analysts on issues that touch all aspects of life and living. In the conversations that follow, you find complexities, different views, ideologies, thought patterns, and individual beliefs. It's quite engaging. We do this Saturdays on NTA Network Service at 9 p.m. It's Weekend Pal, but you call it a Weekend Companion, and it's all about nation building. Join me, Kirin Umayo, and production crew every Saturday for this weekend treat, and I can tell you that it is unmissable. Make it a day. Glad to know you're still watching us. Taraba State moved to put a stop to illegal sale of land. Let's join Charles the Makudi Network Center for details of this and other stories. It's over to you, Charles. Thank you, Ronke, and welcome to Makudi. In furtherance of the nation's solution to existing and emerging security challenges in the country, the Nigerian Air Force Air War College has inaugurated course 2 2017 training for military personnel to track tackle insecurity and terrorism. Commandant of the college, Air Vice Marshal John Kwasu Baba, who performed the inauguration ceremony in Makudi, urged participants to adhere to the noble objectives of the institution. John Yaku reports. The Nigerian efforts is up to the task any time, any day. It is also important for it to continue to train its personnel to sustain its air power and strategies. This informs the establishment of this college here in Makudia. The course 2 2017 of the Nigerian Air Force Air War College has 20 officers with 16 of them from the Air Force and two each from Navy and the Army. The six months course involves models in foundation review, professional development, and evolving solutions to contemporary operational challenges through operational planning demonstration. Others are study visits, war gaming, and research projects. Commandant of the college, Air Vice Marshal John Kwasubaba, while inaugurating the course, said it is geared towards providing solutions to the fight against terrorism and insurgency in the country. The Air Force World Course is structured to develop your understanding of air power and its employment in single service, by service, joint and combined operational planning and execution. Established in 2016, the Nigerian Air Force Air War College has graduated the first set of 30 officers, with 27 of them from the Air Force, two from Navy and one from the Army. In Makudi, John Yaku, NTA News. And from the agricultural sector comes a report that the International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAD, Value Chain Development Program, VCDP, in connection with Benue State Government, has carried out the distribution of more inputs to farmers under the intervention program. Iberian Solomon reports that the event took place in local local government area. Over the years, the International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAD, in collaboration with Olam Nigeria and the Benue State Government, have been working together to boost agricultural production through empowering farmers, especially at the grassroots, with the required skills, inputs, and land. Areas to benefit include Logoburuku, Gumagwe East, Opoku, and Obadibo local government areas of Benue State. The intervention program is for cassava and rice value chains production processing and marketing of the produce. Aside the distribution of inputs to farmers, the Benue IFAD DCDF is supporting farmers with 3,603 hectares of developed land for rice farming and 5,736 hectares for cassava farming. Before now, agriculture was relegated to the background. Nobody took agriculture as a business. 
Awards were given to the five best performing farmer organizations during the 2016 cropping season by Olam Nigeria Limited. Some of the beneficiaries thanked the organizations for the kind gesture and promised to make good use of the inputs in Makudi. Iveri Solomon, NTA News. Well, that's the size of our package from Makudi. Ronke is back to you. Thank you, Charles. Nigeria is exploring ways of securing bank verification numbers, online transaction and vigilance to combat the increase in cases of cyber crimes. To this end, a Cyber World Conference is holding in Abuja to examine the various issues. Abdullahi Suleiman Jaji has that report. Even though Nigeria was not affected by the recent global attack, ransomware, the country has its own share of cyber crimes bedeviling the nation's economy. That explains the convening of this meeting, tagged the Cyber World Conference. The initiative, which is the first of its kind in Nigeria, aims at addressing hacking of mills, malware attacks, and data breaches through interaction with telecommunication experts, the banking sector, and educational institutions, among others. Alerting people to be more vigilant and take better care of their BVN numbers and uh, their other coded uh, numbers available to them about their securities and their bank accounts to get themselves insured against the activities of cyber criminals. We have to put this conference together in order to create awareness and bring people together to let them know that there's need to be involved for us to fight against cyber crime. We have had an internet growth of over 46,000 businesses, making us the highest uh, internet users in Africa. The conference is expected to forward recommendations to government on how to further guard against cyber attacks. In Abuja, Abdullahi Suleimani Yaji, NTA News. United Nations Environment Programme team visits Ogoni land as implementation of report begins. Dibabari is standing by in Port Harcourt with this story and other reports. Hello, Dibabari. Good evening, Ronke, and welcome to Port Harcourt. The United Nations resident coordinator in Nigeria, Edward Kahlo, has called on the people of Ogoni to support the hydrocarbon pollution remediation project as it puts structures in place preparatory to the final takeoff of the cleanup of oil polluted Ogoni land. Kalo made the call at an oil impacted site at Kwawa in Kana local government area, where he led a delegation of the United Nations to monitor the training of technical assistance by high prep. Chileberia reports. The resident coordinator, United Nations in Nigeria, Edward Kalo, during the familiarization visit, noted that the team was in the area to have a first-hand information on the devastation and level of work done on the cleanup of the Ogoni land, calling on the people of the area to give the federal government a chance to be able to deliver a better result. This is a very technical investment. So my appeal is patience to ensure that the required technical um, needs to, to ensure that there is um, an impact at the end of the day is actually done properly. As we speak, we are also talking to consultants with regard to health impact study. We need to create to, uh, the link between exploration, oil activities, and the health of our people. These are the things that the coming, coming weeks, the coming months, you will see more and more activities from high prep. Both the delegation from the United Nations and high prep members agreed that there will be a reassessment of impacted sites during the implementation proper as to capture the level of impact on ground before a remediation plan is sketched for the area. In Kana local government area of River State, Chidiye Bere Onya, NTA News. The River State government has expressed willingness to collaborate with the federal government to commence the cleanup exercise of a Goni land towards a healthy environment. Governor Yesam Wiki stated this at the opening ceremony of the Port Harcourt Environment Summit organized by the River State House of Assembly with the theme, Our Environment, Our Heritage, Environmental Sustainability in River State, a right for all. Karina Igoniko has details. Governor Wiki, represented by the Deputy Governor Ipalibo Hari Banigo, 
commended the assembly for the initiative, noting that the Ogoni people have suffered so much as a result of the oil pollution on their land. He noted that the cleanup exercise will be a pilot program in the Niger Delta region. As government, protecting the environment is a task we must undertake with seriousness because it strikes at the very level of our existence as a people and as humanity. As a parliament, we will remain open at all times to the enactment of appropriate legislation to ensure a safe and habitable environment for a generation of our people. The summit recognizes that sustainable environment requires the participation of all. In Port Harcourt, Karina Igoniko, NTA News. The command has arrested about 80 suspected criminals terrorizing the people of River State. The criminals who were arrested with various life ammunition were paraded by the Commissioner of Police, Zaki Ahmed, during the command's monthly officers' briefing in Port Harcourt. Robinson Derotaide has the details. Those paraded include 76 men and four women, among whom are 31 armed robbery suspects, 16 suspected cultists, 13 suspected kidnappers, and others arrested for murder and other offenses. The command equally recovered 386 life ammunition, 20 pistols, three AK-47, six pump actions, and different types of bullets. Other items recovered include six different exotic stolen cars, generator and TV sets, home appliances, laptops, phones, as well as weeds suspected to be in their arms. War against violent men has been taken to them and is getting even fiercer. I want to sincerely appeal to you to make help and share information with us, as that is the only way our job will be made easy. CP Ahmed commended public opposition that led to the arrest in the last one month and also advised officers to be more proactive in their various units and commands in order to make River State difficult for criminals to operate. In Portacult, Robinson Delateide, NTA News. Stakeholders have been called upon to create an enabling environment for core members as they are posted to the various local government areas to carry out their primary assignment. This charge was at the 2017 Batch A Stream 1 Call Members End of Orientation Program at Norwagbam, Thai local government area. The 21 Days Orientation Program had core members exposed to various leadership and social skills that will help them cope with the challenges of the service year. River State Governor Ian Samwiki, represented by Secretary to the State Government, Kenneth Coburn, charge the core members to continue to exhibit the spirit of discipline and self-reliance. I therefore charge you to allow the lessons and sacrifice and other positive values you have imbibed during your orientation course to serve as a guide to you. State Coordinator National Youth Service Corps of Motayo Adewoye urged them to exhibit good moral standards and maintain the spirit of teamwork at their primary assignment. By this holistic training, they have been tested and confirmed physically and mentally fit to face the challenges that may likely come. About 2,000 Batch A Stream 1 core members passed out and expected to move to the location of their primary assignment. And as our beat from Port Harcourt is over now to Ronke for the rest of the news. Good evening. Thank you, Dibabari. And talking sports now, National Athletes Junior Championship underway in Abuja as 2017 FIFA Confederations Cup kicks off Saturday in Russia. Ayo Dejimaki, the sound guide on sports update. Over 200 athletes from 16 states are competing in a two-day 13 track and field event under 18 and 20 championships at the main bowl of the Abuja National Stadium as the Athletics Federation of Nigeria began the selection process for Africa Junior Championships in Algeria from July 29 to August 2. The competition, which ends Saturday, also serves as a platform to select flag bearers to the World Under-18 Championships in Kenya. By the grace of God in Kenya, I believe this often today will give us a better result. 
Newly elected president of Nigeria Taekwondo Federation, Margaret Binga, a retired national athlete and certified Taekwondo instructor, says domesticating competition will be the priority of the new board as they attempt a restructuring of the sport to attract talents at the grassroots. We have talent abound in this country. They can do it. Talents that, when they come on board and they are ripe enough, we will be rest assured that medals will be coming into the country through Taekwondo. Attention shifts to ice cold Russia on Saturday for the kickoff of the 2017 FIFA Confederations Cup at St. Petersburg as eight teams begin hostilities in four cities till July 2. Hosts Russia play New Zealand in the opening game in which FIFA's video assistance referee technology is expected to be introduced to aid decision making process and prevent the mobbing and surrounding of referees during. Calls. Cameroon have the task of hoisting Africa's flag with ties against Chile, Australia and world champions Germany in Group B. With sports updates, Ayodeji, Makinde NTA News. Before we go, a quick reminder that you can watch all our stories and much more when you log on to our website www.nta.ng. And that is the latest development from our news desk. Thanks for sharing it with us on Nationwide. I am Ronke Kolawali.